10 years ago in Atkins Bay, it would have been 12 or 15 fishing boats. Now there's just a couple. So um, while I was traveling this summer, Mayor contacted two local fishermen. I'd like to introduce uh, Brett Gilliam, who's been here 11 generations and has fished out of Small Point to give his uh, point of view, and then we'll follow that. I've been donating blood here quite rapidly with the mosquitoes that keep on. When I watch this film, you, you get the idea. There's one fishery left in the state of Maine. And it's holding it. And the reason why there are so many lobsters is we have killed the predators. The state, and I caution Pat Kelleher, who is the commissioner of the Department of Marine Resources, at a meeting this spring, he said, we caught over 100 million pounds of lobsters last year. And before that, when I started in the 70s, it was about 25 million pounds of lobsters. And I said, Pat, are you going to take credit for the regulations that we have put on lobsters, the reason why they are so thick today, because that is probably part of it, but you're not factoring in that codfish, haddock, pollock, and everything ate lobsters, and you have completely wiped those stocks out. And it has fell on, it, and it isn't, you give a fisherman that room, and I, I don't know if I agree with them people telling, putting fishermen in, to regulate the fisheries, because I've seen that. You've got that now. You go down to the Herring Advisory Committee, everyone that sits on that committee in that Herring Advisory Room either catches or processes Herring. And, they have, and, and all this stuff has come down under their watch. And the biologists have been ineffective because they don't know half what they think they know, and they are the ones that would be the buffer. And I'll take this, I'll, I'll give you an example on the Manhattan. There hasn't been a, a big fishery on Manhattan in Maine probably for 20 years. So I go to a meeting and they were talking, well, we need to make some rules now if the pogies ever come back. So that if they do come back, we might ensure that they be, a, you know, a viable fisher in a fishery on it. And I said, well, wouldn't it make sense to close the fishery on pogey until the August 1st. Then the pogies have a chance to reproduce, lay their eggs, and then you, you know, you'll catch them. But I said, if you don't, the pogies are broke out and they're caught with the eggs in them. And I said, if you go to the hen house and you take all the eggs, you aren't going to have any chickens. And it's the same way with fish. So wouldn't it make sense and our representative on the AMFC, the Atlantic State Fishery Management Com Commission that has all the power, said, do pokies spawn in Maine? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the biologist said, yeah, some. And I sat there and I thought, what in hell do you think, and excuse me in the lodge house, do you think they got me a call? <laughs> and, and these are the people that should know. <clears throat> You know the reason why there is no codfish out here? When the 200 mile limit was brought in, the government had all this money and said, we got all these fish, we get free and fresh loans. Man and Island developed a net that could be towed between two boats that was probably five and six times bigger than a single boat could carry. Keep that in mind. Up to that point, I was going, I was going to school, but my father would let me go dragging. He had a drag. And I could go weekends. I got ten dollars a day. And we'd get down on our hands and knees and start dressing codfish down here in the sheets. And we never got off our knees until we get in. It was getting four and five and up to ten, twelve thousand a day of codfish. And they were still holding their own. When this free money come along, the state of Maine bought Bob McCullen and Booth Bay one of these nets. 
The first week he caught 330,000 pounds. And by two or three years, it was gone. They just ain't. And they have never come back. So you can't let fishermen have the complete control of it. But, and I don't know the answer, but I do know that's where they were spawning. They never should have been in there and been allowed to fish on those fish. And that guy said it. You stop them from fishing when fish are spawning. Mm -hmm. And you will do a lot to bring the fish, fisheries back. And you don't have to have a thousand people down there in Woods Hole sucking off the taxpayers' money, doing nothing, because that's what I told that biologist. You have done nothing for us. We could have just as much if you had had nothing done as what has happened now, because name me one fish feet. One, except for lobsters. And that's been an accident, as I told Pat Keller. The reason why lobsters are as thick as they are is by accident. And we have been darn lucky that they help. Because when they collapse, it will change the coast of Maine forever. So there's no going back. But they might be, they might be timing. The herring stock, they've, they've lowered the quota. And I notice that there are a few more herring. But you watch. They will set the quota again next year. And you watch. You will see if that is an increase. Because it's big money that controls the sound. And it's hard to move. I go to these meetings, and, and, and that's where it made it. I went to the Fisherman's Forum, and they had this meeting on these pokies. And, and, and this guy gets up, and he said, well, the biologists now tell us that, that the Manhattan, or pokies, we call them, the usual philosophy bait, they're very important. I read a, a biologist said that if you destroy the Manhattan out of the world's oceans, you can reduce every fish stock by 25%. Because apparently they eat a plankton in the water that nothing else eats. And it depletes the oxygen in the water if it's not taken out. So do you get to realize how serious that is? We depend on plankton for our air. You destroy it. And they tell about ocean acidification. I wonder if that, they, they want to blame everything on the global warming. It hasn't been global warming that has ruined the fish species in the Gulf of Maine. It's been overfished. It is done. I've sat and watched it. I participated in it. And as the guy said, we didn't know. <coughs> but these Manhattan, then the biologist spoke, and he said, no, they proved that wrong, that they, they don't alter that algae count. I could have strangled him when he said it. Because, you know, if, if you can make people see how important these fish are, you might get them to move. But, um, yeah. What do you do about the equipment? The airplanes now that they use, as you suggested, the size of the boats, the, the, the roller gear that they can, they can go up on the hard bottom where the fish used to be able to hide, the, the size of the horsepower, the stern trawlers that we've got now. What, that's the problem. What's the answer? The answer is because they ain't going to be going much longer. Because they ain't going to be able to pay for their fuel. <laughs> it's, it's near that. Now, I was listening to them. You know, a guy said, well, we used to be able to get 2,500 pounds a day. Now we're down to 1,000. They won't go much lower than that. And then it will be closed. <laughs> for how long? They closed it in Canada. And I think it's been closed, the cod fishery, for 25 years. It was such a it was such a vulnerable issue that the fish commissioner, when he came in, he had four armed guards on one side of him and four on the other when he went in to close the fish tank. And it will never be reopened again unless it's by hook and line only. And that's what it needs to be. So let it, shut it down, and let it rebuild. But we've got no love to them if they do that. We're dependent. We're taking, we're bringing, well, We'd have the frozen bridge here from Iceland. Apparently, Iceland has regulated that fishery very well. I'd like to know why the, the government allowed the Russian factory ships here to vacuum up all the fogies a few years ago, maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Because the American fishermen couldn't sell them all. They had to have markets, and that Russian market was open. Right, but, but didn't they? 
told him to plead the fogey. Uh, well, they wanted uh, him to plead it because they went up to New Meadows and smothered it and caused a big stink, and they wanted him up. <laughs> <laughs> and it will happen again if they bring fogies back and they go up there and smother. They'll want them gone. Uh, it might be easier for, or for me to understand when you're talking about government, whether it's federal, state, or one of the associations. I think I might be able, if you identify it. The power more. resides in the federal government. You know that. I, I know, but... The federal so government controls everything outside three miles. The state of Maine can only control inside three miles. <laughs> And the ASMFC controls what? And who are they? From here to Virginia. I uh, know. Florida. Not Florida. Yeah. And there, they control different fisheries. I mean, but that, that's what. The lobster fishery has the AMFC, has the right. National Marine Fisheries Service, has the Zone Council, and has the, the Natural Resources Committee. I mean, there's four committees that you have to abide by that rule. And interact with them trying to get someplace, yeah. And I told Pat Calder, I said, the lobster cat will go down. I said, what we've created has been a, is, is, is normal. There's more lobsters on bottom today than there's ever been, and that ain't right. And it's a matter of time yeah. before something happens. Mm -hmm. And then I said, we're going to get all kinds of these new rules and regulations because you're going to try to hold them at 100 million pounds, which they shouldn't be anyway. <laughs> he, you know, he could an answer. Pat Callahan, don't get me wrong. I like Pat Callahan. He will listen. Yeah. You talked about uh, the predators of the lobsters being destroyed, cod and other fish. Cod. What, do the, what do the lobsters eat, and how endangered is their food supply? Well, we're, we're buying bait from Iceland, from the Chesapeake, and pokies. And but that's bait. What, yeah. do they, what do they eat normally? I'll they're say. eating the bait. Do you realize how many hundreds of pounds, and thousands and thousands of pounds of lobster bait go over for a day in this state? <laughs> Every single day, we are farming lobsters, and it's, that's what they're living on. It's, it's, it's fair to say that lobstermen are, are pseudo aquaculture. No. Yeah. Yes. But in that, you've created an ecological nightmare, really. Yeah. Yeah. I know, because when I started fishing 30 years ago in the winter, you could move traps into the deep water, and you didn't get many lobsters. Right. And then 15 years later, it was started to change, and it continues. I, I think they're increasing still, but so isn't the effort. It ain't easy, I can tell you. And these four ground fishermen that's left, I heard them telling, you know, saying on the radio, well, we're going to, they're telling about closing the cod fishery because it's no longer a commercial viable fishery. And my heart goes out to them. I can imagine what they feel, and they don't want to hear me say that it should be closed. I can tell you. <clears throat> I've lived and breathed it all my life. I, my grandfather was on that boat. I have story for great grandfather. My great grandfather. I got an article at home with some of the. He and his brother were some of the first people to smell to sell tuna fish commercially on the coast of Maine. You know, it's sad. It's sad to sit here from where I walk. The, the state of Maine can be commended. They're, they're doing wonders with LYs. They are opening new, reopening and reintroducing LYs in lakes that they haven't been. The Penobscot was decimated. You know what they did with the LYs and the Penobscot? In, in the 1850s, they see these bass tournaments in, in down south. And the guides in, in eastern Maine to those lakes, like the uh, Grand Lake streams and in that St. Croix, said, we want those bass in our lakes because we want those people coming up here to uh, catch bass, have these tournaments, get the tourists in. 
So they put small mouth bass in those lakes, some of them pristine lakes. Just doing that, what a terrible thing to do. And so then somebody said, well, you know, those elwise eat those bass eggs when they come in. So they dam the lake to hold the elwise out. Just one more terrible decision after another until they just about, they eradicated them from the St. Croix and they figure, I think, millions of pounds went up that St. Croix. So I think they're going to take one of those dams out and let it all back up. It happened. But as I go to these LY meetings, I caution you know, you take those dams out, we need the hydroelectric power. And it needs to be said, they need fish ladders. They shouldn't be taking those dams out because hydropower is clean power. It ain't putting no chemicals into the air. And it's a shame to me to see them take those dams out. Yes, Laura. My understanding, Brad, is that they took out two very big dams that weren't producing right. power very efficiently. And in order to do that, they negotiated so that they could increase the power production on the third dam and they put in a fish ladder. So I think it's been a win-win, and that's part of what the Penobscot River Restoration Trust has been so great for. But, but that, that, that's one, that's one good thing yeah. out of many bad. <laughs> and I, I though that herring quota scares me because it's herring that will it's herring the whales eat. You see those puffins with those little fish in their mouth? That's little herring. I, I just wonder where they get them. Because up until last year, we hadn't seen no small herring in the house <coughs> for years. But they are some small herring, but I'm worried that they'll up that quota and take them right back down. <coughs> and I don't want to hog all the time. Thank you, Brad. Can you talk for one moment about bycatch? We don't know. Those midwater crawlers, we don't know just what they're doing at night and what they're catching for bycatch. Because with our wives, they 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 want to blame the midwater crawlers, and I don't know because I've never been midwater crawling. I know occasionally if they get these little haddock in with the lobster bait, they're catching a little herring, and, and I don't want to throw a fishery away if they're not, because I simply don't know. But it is surmised that there, there is, there's more wrong. <coughs> they can't, they possibly is more wrong than overfishing, because on Elwise in the, on the Kennebec, I asked, Mr. Brown, I can't remember his first name, he's a biologist, I said. How many lakes on the Kennebec have a LY run? He said, I think there's 13. And I said, there's three commercial runs, three runs that man takes LY from. And I said, you've got 10 more, and still LY numbers decrease. I said, you've got bigger problems than just man. other things wrong. So here, well, thank you, Brad.